For data types where a number has to be selected, you might want to use a range slider instead of using a text box. This improves the user experience. In this video, I'll show you how to use a range slider in our systems. So this is my service studio. I'm inside a reactive web application. I'm going to quickly create an entity for loan requests, which will help me to show you how to use a range slider. So loan requests, maybe it has some entity, some attributes like name of the person requesting for loan, age, amount for the loan, rate, and maybe duration. Uh, for this, I will use the scaffolding in platform to create the listing and details screen. You can just drag and drop an entity in the main flow editor here. And then uh, the platform helps you to build the listing as well as the detail screen. Now, uh, where do you use range slider specifically where you have to uh, select a number, amount, decimal, and things like that? For example, I can see amount is something maybe I can use a range slider. If I don't use that, still the application will work fine, but then the user will have to key in an amount here. A modern way of doing this is to use a range slider. So at this moment, my application is actually working fine. But I'm going to modify this by removing the text box from here. You will immediately see an error because the label is tied to that, that text box I just removed. So I'll just fix it. I disassociate the label from the text field. And then uh, in the widget side here, you have a range slider. You can drop it here where the label was. And to show you what I did is I put the range slider next to the label. So both them, both of them are still inside the same container. Uh, this whole container here looks very close to the rate, rate container here. So it's good to maybe just put some margin at the bottom, maybe 20 pixels. So there's some space there. Now coming back to the range slider, I'm selecting it now. It has these properties. We can define, for example, what's the minimum value. So maybe we should offer loans starting from 10,000 uh, dollars and the maximum value can be maybe uh, one million dollars so hundred thousand and million initial value maybe we want people to always start from hundred thousand and then we also have additional properties where we can configure steps and things like that now you will notice that the application is still showing an error it's because we have to specify this mandatory property for handling when somebody is changing this slider so here we'll create a new client action you will notice immediately after doing that there is a range slider on change event client event there and it returns a value, which is the selected uh, value in the slider. Uh, this one I can pass to my uh, field that is for the amount under get loan request by ID, which is tied to the form. How I will do this is by using assignment operator, set the variable. And on the left hand side, I'll select the amount variable from my uh, query here. This query is tied to the form, by the way. And then on the right hand side, I'll assign the value of the selected one. Now, uh, we also want the user to be able to see what's the value, what's the currently selected value. So for that, maybe it's good to display an expression that can show the selected value. So I'll drag and drop maybe this expression and the expression can then have the value of the amount. Okay, how about we bold it a bit? And that's it, let me go ahead and publish it to see how it looks. So typically, uh, range slider are very useful when you want users to maybe select age, anything that has to do with numbers, right? Years of experience and things like that. A range slider is much better option compared to a text box. So I'm launching the application now. Uh, listing screen, nothing unusual. But here, you will see now instead of text box, so just to, as a comparison, you will see the rate field still is using text field. Perhaps I can change it later. But now our amount field here, right, is a range slider and by default it says 100K. If I drag in, uh, and move this slider, I can see the amount changing in there. It works perfectly fine. So if I key in maybe a record for John, H20, and this amount, and maybe rate two, duration I leave blank and save. It does create that record here. Okay, so that's how you can use ring slider. There's, there's some variations to this, for example, uh, you can provide values in decimals as well. Maybe I can demonstrate that with for the rate. So same thing, I'll remove the text box, I'll fix the label, and then I'll drag and drop our range slider. Okay, same thing, margin. Uh, let's set a margin, the screen looks nicer. Styles, 20 pixels. And then for the range slider itself, 
we can define minimum value. So rates are in decimals. So maybe I can say minimum value is 1.2%. Maximum value can be 5%. And initial value we could be around 2.2. That's the current ongoing rate for loan maybe. And then uh, uh, with this, uh, the slider will be from 1.2 until 5. That will be the, uh, the length of the slider. And then uh, uh, I just want to show you this additional property that can change the slider into vertical could be used for controls and things like that. If I set it true, the slider will appear vertically. And then uh, the last thing is about the client action for change. And then this field, like I did for earlier amount, I'll associate this with the rate field in the query for loan request. There it goes. And it will have the value. Then one, one last point to display the expression. We do want the user to know what he's selecting. And this goes in the rate field. I can make it bold, control B. I'm clicking from my keyboard, it becomes bold. Let's publish. So unlike the one before, this one will appear vertically and it will also have decimal values in there. So you can, you're able to do that. As long as you specify the corresponding right minimum and maximum values, you're also able to specify additional steps, you know, like you specify what the step should be. By default, it's one. So if you want to change it to point, point decimals, I think in for read, that makes sense. It should be in points. You can do so. You can define like 0 0.2 should be each step. So you can see now that's our modified one. And you can see here, we're able to modify and we are able to use the slider in a vertical fashion. Thanks for watching.